Hi, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm also going to share my screen. Um, and I am here to walk you through a little bit of this curriculum that I created for the ILC to accompany Welcome to the New World. Um, I think it's great. I hope you do too. Um, okay, so I'm just going to walk you through the big picture scope and sequence, um, quick overview, and talk about how to adapt it to your own classroom because I hope this can fit a broad variety of, of classroom and contexts. Um, okay. And, all right. So uh, these are essential questions. They're kind of the six big ideas that we worked with to create the curriculum. Um, why do people leave their homes and what factors affect those decisions? What supports and challenges do people encounter when immigrating to the US? How do people in the receiving community in the US respond to newcomers? What is the refugee crisis? What is our responsibility toward refugees? And how does a graphic narrative effectively tell a story? So you'll see these big ideas throughout the nine, le the nine lessons. Um, and ideally, kids can walk away with these big takeaways, or any students. Um, okay, so here are the nine lessons of the curriculum. Um, I have kind of color-coded them because a few of them go together, and I'm going to just briefly overview each lesson or set of lessons um, to, so you can see how each one fits into the overall flow, and also display on my screen a few of uh, the materials so you can kind of see what, um, what it's going to look like. Um, so to begin, uh, we have Migration as a Human Story and the Refugee Crisis. Uh, these are designed as a cold entry point into immigration. Um, so if you're teaching this at just totally isolated, these are a great um, just beginning entry point into these topics. Um, if you are teaching this, this as part of a bigger immigration unit, you may choose to modify um, or skip these lessons. Um, so we begin by like personalizing migration. Uh, by having students think about a time that they've been a newcomer. Um, we introduced some vocabulary uh, and we really wanted to uh, contextualize migration and refugees um, by looking at migration as a worldwide, everyone does it, um, all over history uh, kind of experience, as well as refugees as coming from many, many different countries throughout history, not just the ones we're hearing about in the news right now. Uh, and then after these two lessons, students will start reading the graphic narrative um, with chapter one. So our lesson three, after they've read that first chapter, is graphic narratives as literature. Um, I, I, as a teacher, feel like graphic, graphic narratives get kind of a bad rap as being like easier um, because they have less text and they have pictures, but actually there's this whole other layer of the artwork uh, that is just a different way of accessing those critical thinking skills. So we begin by comparing graphic and conventional narratives to see where the overlap is and also what graphic narratives have that conventional narratives don't. Um, and then we'll get into some of the vocabulary they need to talk about the, the graphic style and we'll introduce the close reading protocol, which will show up three times in the curriculum um, and we'll actually talk about at the end of this presentation. So stay tuned. Um, next, uh, lessons four and five uh, deal with sort of the technical and humanitarian aspects of immigration to the US. Um, we start by building empathy by connecting the students' own histories and putting themselves in the family's shoes. Uh, and this can be a great place, depending on your context, to build some real life connections and or clarify some really pervasive misconceptions about how immigration works. In both of these lessons, students will tackle complex real life nonfiction texts um, but support it. So for example, in this American Immigration Council um, article you see on the screen, it's pretty dense. Um, but we ask students to tackle it by doing two things. One is looking to fact check their own assumptions about immigration and also looking for a couple of key pieces of information related to the Aldeban family. And so in that way, they're able to sort of access this very difficult text. Um, the other thing that is brought up uh, is like, okay, they got through the system, it was hard, they're here, now what do they need? What does a family arriving in a new country with just their suitcases need? Um, and who is responsible, who are the helpers? Who's providing those things for them? Um, and dealing with this very complex idea of integration, um, which has no real definition, is different for every receiving country. Um, so getting students to think about what does it mean to integrate? And then also whose responsibility are the various aspects on the individual, the receiving community, and the government level um, of helping newcomers integrate into society. 
Um, okay, so lesson six is kind of a midpoint activity. It's back to that sort of more of a literary focus, um, a little more creative, some group work. Uh, this activity is called a mind mirror, which I borrowed from quality teaching for English learners, um, but I've used in a lot of contexts with all different learners. Um, it's a great chance for students to really dig into the text in a group setting um, by pulling a lot of evidence from the text, as well as symbols, drawings, their own, uh, their own words, any kind of visual representation. And they do it all in this like big head shape, um, which we did put as a worksheet into the curriculum, but I usually draw on like a big piece of poster board. Um, and I also, so you can adapt it to any kind of, you can adapt it as much as you want to your own class. I did include a rubric, um, so it's there for you. Um, but again, make it what you want. And if you are, if you're teaching an ELA class, you may choose to expand this with some text-based writing, either after this lesson or at the end of the curriculum. Um, next two, we have lessons in seven and seven and eight, which um, are about the war in Syria. They're a very high-level overview to a very complex topic. Um, chapter four in the book is a flashback to the Aldemans' time in Syria before they fled to Jordan, uh, and they're assigned that chapter between these two lessons. Um, so this is just to give them enough background information to understand what's happening with that family in Syria um, and what's happening with the war. Um, if you have the time and it makes sense for your curriculum, you could consider expanding this because, I mean, you can talk about the conflict in Syria for a week or a month or a semester. Um, there's a lot there. So these two lessons just give you enough support to understand the text, um, to understand the story. Uh, yeah. So that's, and then they read chapter four, and then after this, they read chapter five, which is the final chapter. Um, and that last lesson, number nine, stories of migration and refugees, um, is designed for them to reflect on the final chapter and connect to current events. Um, there is a discussion on anti-refugee sentiment uh, and our responsibilities toward refugees, which will take some consideration of your class and context. It's an important discussion, um, but needs to be handled carefully. Uh, and then we end with some facts like we like to do at the ILC um, and a reflection on how the stories we hear about migration from each other and from the media might be different from the real experience of the Aldebans um, that they have just learned about. So those are the nine lessons. Um, when I wrote this curriculum, I wanted it to be two things. One is supportive and concrete enough that you can just print and go. So if you just want to do the whole thing in two weeks, um, it's there for you and it can end with lesson nine. I also wanted it to be flexible enough that you could adapt it um, at any point into a larger uh, curriculum in history, in ELA, um, in humanities, which is what I taught. Um, so I want to talk about some of those points of flexibility now. Um, as I mentioned, you should absolutely feel free to skip or expand lessons according to your need. And to support that, we've included a going deeper section for each lesson. That includes um, extra resources and in many cases, extra lesson plans that I really liked from external sources. Um, so you can dive deeper into various aspects of the curriculum as it's written. Also with reading the book, uh, I've read a lot of books with a lot of classes and the way I, even I as one teacher approached it depended on the schedule and the time of the year and the, the grade level. Um, so you can do that however it makes, sen makes sense for you. Uh, it's listed as homework and we included a worksheet of chapter questions for each chapter that you can just print and send home. Um, but you may choose to, you know, take a class in between the lessons and read the, read the book together and answer the chapter questions. You may choose to take some questions and not others depending on your students. Um, so make that what works for you. Um, we also included a few like meatier discussion questions for each chapter in the lesson following um, the assigned chapter. Uh, and those are not written into the lesson plan. They're just there for you to use however makes sense for you. So that may be as a whole class, it may be in pairs, it may be written reflection, it may be homework, whatever makes the most sense for you. Um, they're just there to be used as makes as works for your class. Um, and then finally, uh, the curriculum, so lesson nine is a culminating lesson. You can end there. However, if you'd like to extend to a final project, we put in uh, five different final project ideas depending on your class. Um, they are, we have a few essay questions. Um, we have this idea to do newcomer graphic stories, which I think is a sort of natural extension of reading a graphic narrative. Um, 
this really cool app called Moving Stories from our partner, Reimagining Migration, which has its own whole learning guide and, and can be a really like cool, personal, community-based storytelling opportunity. Uh, these are two really great, very in-depth lesson plans um, for international policy and decision-making about the conflict in Syria, um, if it makes sense for your curriculum to go deeper into that aspect. And then finally, some ideas actually um, with a link from the ADL on how to engage students in activism um, around this topic. So that's the curriculum. Um, in the last five minutes I have or so, uh, I wanted to introduce you to the close reading protocol that we wrote in to the curriculum in three different places. Um, close reading is a technique that teachers use to support students into really digging deeply into a short section of text. So at three points in the curriculum, um, I pulled one page uh, and students are asked to go through this close reading protocol and then discuss just that one page. Um, this protocol is uh, adapted from the amazing teacher Kimberly Young uh, from Reimagining Migration's webinar using graphic novels to teach about migration. I definitely encourage you to check it out. She has a ton of amazing ideas um, for bringing a lot of different kinds of novels, even single pages, to teach about migration. Uh, and so I'd actually like to go through uh, with everybody just a few pieces of this close reading protocol. Um, I pulled page 62, which is the second close read um, in, the, in the curriculum, and I number the panels so we can talk about them. Um, and I'm going to ask you to please answer in the chat box. We can talk for a couple minutes. Uh, four questions. One is even before you have read the page, where did your eye go first when you're approaching the page and why? So I'm going to give you a minute. Yeah, I'm seeing pretty much everybody respond that big like clock thing. Um, even though it's at the end, your eye goes right there. Um, at one of the questions in the protocol asks students to actually draw where their eye goes when approaching a page. For me, I kind of look at it backwards, the clock first and then back to see how the tension builds. Um, I think that clock is kind of the visual equivalent of like a ticking clock uh, in the background of a movie scene that really adds this level of stress as like the first thing that you look at um, to this whole scene. Um, so thanks everybody. Uh, the next one I wanna look at is anything interesting about the arrangement, order, shape, size, or placement of the panels. This isn't just like a comic strip, just boxes. There's interesting things going on. Um, so anything that you notice. There's variety in each picture. Yep, there's a couple without borders. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. There's a couple, yeah. So there's a lot of different things going on. Um, the, someone said different, there's like different shapes. Um, in panel four, there's this sort of round, soft circle um, between uh, surrounding this couple, which lends this air of like tenderness to the moment. But then in the next panel, same conversation a second later, it's boxed in, there's those like spiky lines, you can see the tension rising. Um, uh, yeah, and, the, and number two also isn't boxed in. I like that it's sort of, you can tell that she's like thinking that in between that conversation, it's not like a main thing. Um, yeah, okay, thank you, I'm gonna move on. Um, then this one, I'm gonna actually give you a minute to read it, I have a minute and a half left. Um, choose a pair of panels that interest you and what do you think happened between those panels and what are you thinking as a reader? Um, graphic novels are told in this like snapshot format and so it's fascinating. We call it the gutter, the line, like the space between the panels. What's happening in the gutter? What is shown? What is not shown? What does the reader have to infer? And why are those decisions being made? And what, what is the reader doing um, as a way to sort of think about that? Yeah, we can imagine the, hus the wife like encouraging the husband um, between panels four and five. Oh, and switching conversations between panels three and four. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the husband, you can you imagine the husband sort of getting stressed out. Um, okay, I'm going to move on because I'm running out of time. Uh, thanks, everybody. Oops. Oh, no. My last question is note how much time you think passed. So we talk about in lesson three. Um, graphic novels we call scene writing versus summary writing. So a page in a graphic narrative can take a few seconds or a few years, anything in between. So scene writing is when they zoom in on a few moments and summary writing is when they zoom out uh, to show a long period of time or several things happening at once. 
Uh, so it's good to notice as the reader um, which one it is and why the author or the artist is choosing to display time that way and what effect that it has in the story. Um, so yes, this one is um, just a few, a few minutes, probably a few conversations. Um, so I'm gonna wrap up there because um, my time is up, um, but these are ways that you can really dig into these complex reading skills with this graphic narrative with your students. Don't lose the opportunity to get those reading skills in. Um, so I hope this curriculum helps you to have those conversations both about literature and about this really important um, refugee and immigration topic. Thank you.